Hi, everyone, and we're, welcome to San Diego Humane Society's Humane at Home events that we have for you every Friday. We do apologize. We wanted this um, particular event to be through Facebook Live, but we are having some technical difficulties, so we're going to pre-record it and then send it out to all of you that are interested so you can watch at your own convenience. My name is Kelly, and I am the community outreach coordinator here at the San Diego Humane Society and I'm here to talk to you about our pet assisted therapy program and how many lives that it touches not only people but animals as well so we're going to get into the nitty-gritty tell you a little bit about what the pet assisted therapy pro programs are all about the volunteers that help and the animals that help with their volunteer owners also so before I get started, do want to let mention that next Friday, October 7th, oh, I'm sorry, October 16th is going to be our virtual adoption event. It's going to be live via Facebook. Let's hope we don't have any technical difficulties. And that um, starts at four o'clock. So be sure to tune in then. So you may be asking yourself what pet assisted therapy is. Well, for the San Diego Humane Society, it definitely is a very unique program considering that we are an animal shelter that's doors are open to animals in our vicinity of where we live in our cities. So we are unlike other entities and agencies that are able just to do outreach and have therapy dogs that go out into facilities. We are able to have that program through the San Diego Humane Society. So we are very thankful for that and for our volunteers that are able to touch people's lives that need it most. So, um, not only does our pet assisted therapy help people in need, but it also does give out our programs and resources about people that have their own pets and they want to keep their pets in their own homes. So we do have a lot of program um, and support services um, that do help for people if they need vaccines, spay and neuter, anything that's discounted. Not only that, we also have our pet pantry at all three of our campuses that are open Tuesday through Saturday from nine to six. So you can check out more at our community programs tab and learn more from there about that. So as I get in the nitty gritty, um, our pet assisted therapy program definitely does share a lot of joy and animal companionship to the community. Um, and it's people need love. They need to see animals. They want to feel animals. They want to have them by their sides. Animals are definitely very healing and they seem to just really connect a lot differently than humans do. Humans are great too. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we've been doing this um, for San Diego's, you know, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I need my coffee today. Um, we've been bringing joy to San Diego for about 40 years. And we have 100 plus volunteers, which is amazing. These are people that um, volunteer with their pets. At this time, we aren't taking any volunteers due to the pandemic. So if you are eventually interested in the Pet Assisted Therapy Program to volunteer with your pet, just keep checking our website at sdhumane.org. We will keep you updated on when we are going to recruit new volunteers. But at this time, we are not taking any due, of course, to COVID. Um, the program has visited as many as 19,000 people a year, and that's, of course, pre-COVID. Next slide. So how does your pet bring you joy? So I know my pets bring, bring me joy because even if I just go get the mail and come back, I've been gone for a minute, they still have the same reaction. So not only that, they are near me when I'm sad, they know when something's wrong, and they're just great little companions and I love them. So think about what your pet does to bring you joy. And I'm sure it's a magnitude of different, different things. Slide, please. So about our clients, we go into senior living communities, which definitely need it most. You see these people just lighten up having an animal, whether it's a dog, a rabbit, a hamster, a guinea pig, a rat, you never know. You see just, they start talking about their own pets and it's that they've had through their lives and it is quite touching. We go to skilled nursing facilities, mental health centers, special education classes, centers for adults with disabilities, juvenile detention centers, and college and corporate partners. Next slide. So this is um, some of the experiences that the people have had that have had the pet assisted therapy program come to their facility. So one of our staff members asked a gentleman what he was experiencing when petting a bunny and the man did take some time and after a period of reflection he stated, I'm experiencing joy. 
And that is just amazing because that's what we want people to feel when they're around animals. We want them to feel joy. We want them to feel loved. We want them to feel comforted and we want them to feel special because I feel as if animals do make us feel very special in their own way. And I can't really see this slide. Hold on. So we are animal ambassador animals. What kind of animals are they? Hmm. Rabbits, guinea pigs, rats, dogs, cats, and we do have a tortoise, a pig, and a bird. So plenty of different animals. Really depends on their demeanor and how they how social they are with people, of course, and with other animals. Slide. So ambassador animals. So these animals are um, housed at the shelter. So we'll usually those are rabbits, guinea pigs, rats. They work in the program for about six to 12 months and then we retire them and then they get adopted. So it's really cool to see these animals be put at work and then get to see the progress of them in the program and then get adopted into homes, which is so fortunate for the animal and of course for the new owners as well. All of the other ambassador animals belong to the wonderful volunteers. Um, they're selected based on their temperament and they they need to be enjoying themselves. So they need to be having a good time, wiggly, going up to people and just super social. Very important. <laughs> Next slide. So a lot of people do ask too, what is the difference between therapy versus service animals? And there is definitely a big difference, even though they do kind of cross. Um, therapy animals do provide a lot of support and comfort and they're encouraged to interact with people and greet and get pets but on the other side the service animal is more of you know they're trained to perform a certain task like a seeing eye dog anything like that and um, they definitely assist their handler and should not be pet on the job so of course they have two different roles but it's all for a person or for people so that's definitely the difference so if you see somebody that has do not pet my dog that's a service animal they are doing a job and you do not want to distract them they're doing a job, they gotta keep busy. So our canine ambassadors do need basic requirements in order to be in the pet assisted therapy program. Of course, like I said, they need to be outgoing and friendly with all people, friendly with other dogs, ignores all small animals, rabbits, guinea pigs, and rats, not shy or scared in new situations. Um, they need to be spayed or neutered. They have to be at least a year old and all ambassadors, no matter the species, must pass a temperament evaluation and show relaxed body language and the desire to approach people and of course be pet. Next slide. So, no, I'm so excited about this. So you are going to meet Marissa and Otis. They are canine good citizens and they are, um, they do our read program, de-stress events and school outreach programs. So with all, well, here you go, Janet. We're gonna meet Janet who is there. We like to say chauffeur. So Janet is the chauffeur for Marissa and Otis. Hi there, Miss Janet, how are you doing? Sorry. You're good. You're good. That mute. How are you doing today? So tell us a little bit about your dogs and who's who. This is Marissa. Uh, Marissa is a dog that we got from a uh, service dog breeder because we wanted a dog that had the right temperament to work with children. Um, Otis, this little guy over here, is someone who adopted me while I was volunteering at the San Diego Humane Society. He has gone through all of the training. Both of these guys are canine good citizens. I have to say we don't have that as a requirement for ambassador animals, but the thing that's great about canine good citizen is you have the opportunity to set up a relationship with your animal. You understand them a little more. There's a better communication. I've, uh, I've learned that when the dog helps, they're always talking, but I've learned more about what they're saying by able to read their body language and then how they're acting in certain situations. Being a canine good citizen, they're able to approach other animals and be relaxed. 
they aren't reactive. Sometimes you'll notice if you go by someone when they're, you're on a walk with your pet and there's another dog that's lurching and wanting to react and either engage or wants to be um, perhaps unfriendly. Um, that's not a good behavior and you want the dog to be comfortable in environments. So the canine good citizen is one situation where when they go through that training, it helps them to be more comfortable in social environments, working in a crowd and uh, being able to chill. Well, they look very chill, that's for sure. So Janet, what made you get involved with the pet assisted therapy program? The reason I got involved mostly in the read program was because I have a grandson who has dyslexia and it took a while for them to identify his um, learning difference. And when he was able to go to a school that understood him better and helped him to learn, the one thing that helped him to read was a dog that came to the school on a regular basis and read with them. Marissa and Otis are love to have children read to them. And they love to engage people at, at uh, events. Well, they were ambassador dogs during the pre, pre COVID. And at that time we would go to different events and activities with the Humane Society and help share their programs that they have because the Humane Society offers a great service to the community. And it's nice to share it, make people aware of what's available to them and what a great program they have at the Humane Society. I've thoroughly enjoyed that as well as working the dogs. And they do read programs, but they do many other things with the Humane Society. It's a social environment that they truly en enjoy. Right now, they're pretty chill, but if there's a person around, they want to engage them. They'll go out to them and want to touch them. And it also helps people to get to know us at the Humane Society because approaching an animal is much more welcoming sometimes. And that touch that we're missing now, I think having a therapy animal available makes a big difference. And it helps bring them to be more communicative. It does. Now, how did you know that your dogs would be a good fit for this type of program? We went to a class and took a, a class for Canine Good Citizen and then for, oh goodness, I'm so sorry. There's a plane going over. Um, but we took a class for Canine Good Citizen and then we took a therapy dog class to see how they felt. Um, in that class, they do a lot of different things that show the animal what interaction. And that's where you really want to use your skill at reading what they're saying, watching their body language, mm -hmm. making sure they're comfortable in that situation. And when they are happy to be doing it, they will show it, they'll engage. Um, if it's something they're not excited about, they're going to step back, shy away. Um, try to move away with their face. Um, these guys, they truly enjoy engaging people. And when we walk now, while we're trying to social distance, they always want to go over to greet somebody. Yes, oh, it's definitely um, been very hard for the canine ambassadors, I feel like, because they've been stuck at home for the past six, seven months. Oh, it's been hard for So them. the last question I have for you is, can you share an impactful moment that you or your pet had while helping um, a client or at a specific event or, or one of the read programs? Is there anything that stands out to you? I think the one thing that stands out to me with the, the programs that we've done with children, um, with the Humane Society, we get to share with them how animals are a part of us, but how we need to respect them. Sometimes children don't realize and going out with the Humane Society into the program, children learn and it's amazing how much they tell you. Um, we did a field trip with the Humane Society um, where the kids came in from their school and they did a tour of the facility. It was probably 
four or five months later, um, these guys went to one of the schools in the community and they walked over and they said, Otis, I haven't seen you. And I went, you know, Otis, they remembered him from visiting our facility in Oceanside. And it was like, wow, they really mm -hmm. are impactful. They are. And it makes you feel like it really is a good, great service that we do. And kids remember everything, I feel like. Kids I remember. They're so smart. Okay, guys. Well, is there anything you would like to share with us before we let you three would you go like on to your share something? way? Mm -hmm. Well, I think they're interested in treats right now. I Can you guys say hi? Can you say hi? Otis, can you touch? Well, Marissa can lick. Yeah, she's good at that. She's good at that. No, we hope to see everyone soon out in the community and be more out there, but being able to do it virtually is really our best bet and it's, it's been enjoyable. It Thank has you. been, it's what we have for now. But we look forward to seeing you, Marissa and Otis, hopefully soon. And if it's this way too, that's all right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So thank you, Janet. Thank you, Otis. Thank you, Marissa. And now we are headed off. Oh, yes. The Graham Cracker. We are headed to meet Graham and his mama, Terry. Now, Graham does pet assisted therapy pup with us and um, youth program. So, Miss Terry. Let me unmute. There. Oh, he's laying down still. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is this is Graham Cracker. Obviously, his color gave him his name, and um, he just he loves the high five. That's his favorite thing to do. And um, he's five years old, and he just recently he's been kind of chilling out more, like laying down, relaxing a little bit more. But he is a doodle, so that he uh, a doodle means that he's a golden retriever mixed with a poodle. So he's got a lot of energy. Um, loves, I mean, has to have his at least two walks a day. Otherwise, he's kind of like this. <laughs> but um, he just has this wonderful fur that. And I was watching Janet as she was talking. She was just kind of digging her fingers into her beautiful dog and uh, it's just such a comforting thing to do and so that's kind of what brought us to the Humane Society is just to have um, a dog that we can share and um, train and just be a part of his life and then also share his life with with others through the Humane Society. So um, his favorite thing is obviously peanut butter. Lots of dogs like peanut butter. And, um, and then he will chase a ball a hundred times a day. So um, he, he's super energetic and we just have to keep up with him, but we love him. <laughs> That's why we love him, right? They keep yep. us going. They keep us going. They really do. Yes. So, yes. Carrie, what got you involved in wanting to help with this, the pet assisted therapy program? Um, well, I had the time. And um, gosh, I think I've been volunteering for about 16, 17 years. I had another dog, a black Labrador, and Iris was just super chill, even more than, than Graham. And uh, we just had such a great time visiting um, schools for special needs, visiting retirement homes, hospitals, and uh, just interacting with with all the people there and they just love to talk with Iris and Graham and you know feed them treats the ones that I, I give them and I show them how to kind of work with it with with them um, I show them how they can do the high five and they just love that um, so yeah that's kind of what brought me there was my other dog <laughs> my former dog she was like mom you're, I'm put, you're putting me to work he knew. <laughs> Iris knew. Yes. <laughs> and of course, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, I think, with a lot of these dogs on why they would do so good in this program. But what stood out about Graham that you thought? Well, he, he's really good at these tricks. We haven't been practicing. We're out of practice because we haven't been there for a while uh, 
visiting with Pet Assisted Therapy and the Humane Society. But um, but yeah, the tricks was just and his fur, of course, you know that comfort, and um, and just making people smile and laugh and clap their hands when they're in their wheelchairs or or the kids are you know in the classroom. It just there's just uh, so many things that a dog can do to make people smile. So um, pr probably his tricks. Like right now, hi, bye. yeah, Cease looks yeah. <laughs> hi, He's, he's so proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's too cute. Now, I have the same question that I gave to Janet is, is there an impactful moment that you, that stands out while you were helping at any of? Um, you know, I don't have a specific moment. Um, I just have um, memories of people like going to a place when they touch a, a mammal, a warm blooded mammal, whether it's the bunnies or the rats or a dog or a cat, they just uh, tend to go back into their memories and their, their positive life, maybe back then more. Um, and some of them, it brings tears to their eyes. And also it's so, um, so great to witness them kind of their voices change when they want to talk to the animal and they'll, their voices get high and maybe kind of childlike. And it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. And, um, you know, even, even now it brings, you know, emotion to my voice. And, um, but yeah, it's, I'm just so glad that I'm a part of it. And uh, I hope that this COVID passes so that we can get back in there, right? And work so with those people, people again. Yeah. I think right now it's really important too for people to be connected and yeah. to have support. And I mean, it, it, this is nice because this does help, but there's so much more of being face-to-face -face with a person yes. and an animal Right. That hopefully we can get back to that soon. And thank you, Terry and Graham. We appreciate everything you do. And we're so happy to have you as volunteers for the Pet You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So next, we are actually off to see Cooper and Janice Hoplin. So we are going to go over to Amanda so she can show us what's hopping in. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. I'm kind of glad to get in live, but I probably would have thrown that out there anyway. So, hello. Tell hello. us about your cute bun buns. So, I am blessed with the two cutest bunnies that ever walked the face of the earth. Um, right here, grooming herself, you have Janice. I think Janice, Janice is a lion's head bunny. And she turns around, come here, Janice. Look, bun like a treat. And you can see she's all puffy in the front. She's got a little poofy chest. And that's her lion's, that's her lion's head right here. So um, Janice, ac actually Janice came to me as a foster, because I foster as well, in 2018. And she was six months old, but had six babies. Oh, wow. And um, as a mama bun, uh, Janice is so loving and she cared for those babies until the day they got adopted I mean she was the best mom and kept feeding them and she was loving and caring and kissy and all the babies give kisses give mommy kisses give mommy kisses and she gives kisses and those babies got adopted within the week I'm sure and then Janice was put in as a PAT bunny. Um, she's very, very calm. She will run up to the kids to get pets. She's very sure of herself and she gives kisses to anyone who will let her. Um, and she's just, she's just a very loving bunny and she's very, very social. And so she did PAT for six months. And in that six month time, um, I was volunteering in the kitten nursery and I would go and visit her every day I worked there. And then I just decided that she was going to be mine. So I brought her home, but before she could be relieved as a PAT bunny, she needed a replacement. And that replacement was Cooper. <laughs> so Cooper came to us as a foster. We fostered him for a little bit as he was getting medically cleared to be a PAT bunny. 
He was very young, though. He was four months old. And so Cooper replaced Janice, and I brought Janice home. And we gave her a couple months break, but she got very, very lonely. And she wasn't unhappy. She was just very, very lonely because she was used to being in the spotlight um, and loved by all. So Cooper lasted, I think, three months in the PAT program, but he was so young and energetic. He wasn't, um, he wasn't quite the right fit in everything that you had explained before in an animal. So um, my sister and I decided to adopt Cooper because um, actually everybody in the PAT program felt that he would be a good fit for Janice. So bonding bunnies can be tricky. It can take even up to a year to bond them. And Janice and Cooper bonded in about 24 hours. And Janice says, yep, this is my baby. Yep. I'm moving into his cage. Leave me alone. She's so sweet. Yep. And I love that. Thank you for fostering and adopting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's how they came to be in my life. And do, um, can you think of any impactful moments while you were volunteering with them that stands out? You know, the most impactful thing to me is when everybody greets Janice by name. Um, her full name is Janice Hoplin and the kids remember her from either a PAT visit or prior pause and paperbacks, like before I actually adopted her. And it's been two years since she was in the program now so to have those people remember her and love her and come up and ask her how she's doing like I think that's the most impactful thing for me um, is just seeing what a wonderful bunny she is and when Cooper is with her he is super calm and loving and just wants everybody to pet him as well all these years later, as we continue to do it, have people remember her from her time at the Humane Society. She was already famous before you adopted her. Yep, already With famous. a name like that, you know, and she's just hamming it up on screen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh oh, we lost you, we lost you a video. Oh, I don't know where I went. It happened. Are you still there? I feel like that uh -oh. a lot. I don't know where I went. Where did it go? Well, thank you, Ms. I can't Amanda. find Zoom. I know it's today. It, it's Friday, so all the technical stuff is like I'm. It's the weekend already. Everything's tired. <laughs> but thank you, oh, Amanda. We appreciate you and Sean Cooper and Miss Janice hopping about, stealing the show as always. Janice. <laughs> Janice. She's like, where are my hugs, people? Where are my hugs? Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon, Amanda. I'm hoping. Hoping. But yes. Well, thank you. We appreciate everything you do for us. And I hear the kit, the foster kittens back there. We just got a litter of three-week-old kittens. We have here, four here. of them. So this little boy here is Keenan. Whoops. He just discovered his tail like a minute ago. Oh, He's pretty excited. Oh, so cute. And then the one you hear is, her name is Juju, and she's got tortitude of mag n horrible portions. Torty for you. And she's decided that she's starving. They are starving. <laughs> well, thank you, yeah. Amanda. There's Tori. There's it's Juju. <laughs> so, now we are off. I'm very excited. I'm very excited about the next one. So next we are going to meet Honey, Rose, and Jasmine and their mama, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Do you have them all in a little sack? A little sack? <laughs> I've got two of them. The other one's not cooperating right now. So this is, where'd they go? This is Honey. And uh, oh. she's she and her sisters here were all born in um, July at the shelter. And oh, so I had a little hand in helping socialize them. They haven't actually been in the PAT program um, because we, you know, have COVID. But I've worked with the, the PAT program for going on four years now. 
and I quickly found that I had some kind of connection with working with the rats and had since adopted um, two or three of the the litters that we had used for Pat. So uh, this this is little honeysuckle. Oh, little honey. So you had never had rats prior. I had never had rats. And Look at that. Um, yeah, and you know, I, I was kind of like everybody else. I was like, well, yeah, they're cute, you know, but they're what tame. kind of pet would they make? Yeah, they're being so silly. This this is their afternoon playtime. So, come here, you. The, so, people don't um, realize how social they really are. Exactly. Are. They truly are. And they really get connected to humans, which is great. And that's why they make such great cat animals also, because one of the reasons I got into the program was... I truly believe also, like the San Diego Humane Society, in the, um, the oh, I just lost the word, the uh, connection with the human and animal bond. <laughs> and, um, and so rats really personify that connection. When we take them out on visits, oh, people are so excited to see them because they're interactive. And so they can crawl on somebody if, if, if they want to. Some, some of the older people don't want anything to do with the rats because they had some bad experiences with wild rats growing up. And this is a great way for them. Here, baby, one of three. Mmm. Delicious. It's so good. Come on, show them how you eat. It's so good. Um, not on camera, not on camera. I don't even I know. They were being adorable earlier. <laughs> now they're hiding behind me. But, um, a lot of people grow up afraid of rats, and so this is an excellent opportunity mm -hmm. um, for them to get to know the rats as a, a really fun pet and a very smart pet. Just, Just like what you learned. You wouldn't have known. I mean, no. if you would have thought, you know, 10 years, 15 from now, years from now that you were going to have rats. <laughs> well, you know, I, tell you, like, I don't know, you know, maybe. Yeah, I know. I've got uh, several friends who think I'm a little crazy because I was yeah. already a crazy cat lady, but now I'm the crazy rat lady. No, too. you're not. You're not crazy. <laughs> so, consider, I know that these, these three haven't been out and about yet, but it's wonderful that you were able to get them so young to where you can handle them and get them as well socialized with people as you could. Um, right. Now, rats live about, what, about a year and a half to two years? Is that correct? Um, actually, it's up to three years. It is up to three years. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the hardest thing to tell the kids because the kids, is, as usual, I mean, they get, they love the rats and they're so excited when we come and bring the rats. Um, and then when they learn that they're, you know, on the earth for only a short time, I said, well, you know that that's that's a long time to get to know each other and to have some fun and just give them the best life that they could possibly have oh she's gonna have two <laughs> you have a cookie Want a cookie um and uh i was thinking i was trying to think of a um a special experience that we had on pat and i think every time i bring the rats something special happens but um you want a cookie? Oh, <laughs> well, I think we know who who's in who's in the mood for snacking right now. It's Miss mm -hmm. Rosie. <laughs> but um, we do a lot of special education visits, and some of those people are so excited when they know the rats are coming. They can barely contain themselves, and they're clapping and smiling, and they're so excited. And and uh, we feel like we don't have enough rats to go around sometimes, but the, the rats are special because, like I said, they can interact with them and they can not only pet them, but they can let them crawl on them and, and hold them and snuggle them and they'll fall asleep in their arms. And that connection is really, really obvious then. So that's what's, that's just so much fun. <laughs> well, and it's not, yeah, it's so wonderful to see somebody so passionate about rats because I feel like they do just get such a bad rap yeah and yeah. people just don't realize how inquisitive and smart and loving and social they are and these aren't your street rats no. these are <laughs> companion animals that's right and i'm so happy laura that they obviously through the program it made you love rats 
Who would yeah. have thought? We're, past, we're, we're spreading the word. We're spreading spread the, word. the word, Laura. Spread <laughs> the word. Well, is there know. anything you would like to share about your raddies before we let you all go? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, this litter was actually brought <laughs> The mom, the pregnant mother, was brought in this summer to the, to the shelter. And the owner said, I want the mom back, but I don't want any of the babies. So mom had 16 babies, and we gave her lots of love, too. Um, and we had, what was it, six girls and seven boys, and you have to separate them pretty quickly, because mm -hmm. as you know, you're going to get an another litter of babies pretty soon if you don't. Very um, good. And these guys, <laughs> where are you going, sweetheart? This one here, hi, honey, she's called a Dumbo rat, and I used to think it was a different species of rat, but she came from the same litter as the other ones here, Rosie and her sister Jasmine, who just look like um, regular like brown hooded rats. But out of the same litter, we also had two um, hairless rats. So uh, that was pretty eye-opening for me. I didn't know that you could have so many different kinds of rats come from the same litter. Nor did I. I just learned something new. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, there's so much to learn. And, you know, I always tell people who are afraid of their tails, I let them feel them because they're soft. They, they look kind of scales. Yeah. yeah. But they're yeah. soft, right? Soft. Yeah. And, um, and they help them with their balance and they help them regulate the, the temperature. So there's nothing scary about it. Um, and so many of our, our pet people, uh, just really adore the rats. They're, I think, you know, I don't want to say they're the favorite because dogs are pretty interactive too. They always love the dogs coming too, but uh, they do like to have the rats on them, I think. <laughs> yeah. I well, show that. your better side. She's like, my tail. You were just talking about my tail, mom. So I, I guess thought I would so. show it. See how well, smart they are? I told you they were smart. Super smart. <laughs> Well, I just yeah. want to say thank you to all you lovely volunteers, Janet, Terry, Amanda, and Laura, and all of your lovely animals. We appreciate you so much and all the work you do in the community to help make people smile and educate them, not only about the San Diego Humane Society, but also sharing the love of your animal with others. And um, we are having our Humane at Home virtual adoption event next Friday at four o'clock live on Facebook, October. I have to look at the calendar 16th. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I don't know what month. I don't even, I know what year it is. That's about it. Um, that's about it. But just want to thank everybody for making it today. Sorry that we had some technical difficulties earlier, um, but thankfully we were able to just pre-record this and send it out to those of you that want to check it out and stay tuned. Go to the website, sdhumane.org, if you have any questions about events or programs, resources, what we're doing, you want to adopt, whatever, check out our website and it will direct you from there on what to do. So hope you all have a lovely Friday or whatever day it is now that you're watching this and take care. Bye.